I'm going to react to an absolutely killer movie monologue from Christopher Walken. It comes from a movie called Pool Hall Junkies that I have never seen and know nothing about, but I've watched this scene several times already, and I'm excited to watch it again. It's only about 150 words, but it's powerful. We'll watch it together, the whole thing, and then I'll give you my breakdown so you can use the tips to improve your own communication. You watch those nature documentaries on the cable? Yeah. You see the one about lions? Yeah. Look at this lion. He's the king of the jungle. Huge mane out there. He's laying down under a tree in the middle of Africa. He's so big. He's so hot. He doesn't want to move. Now, the little lion comes, they start messing with him. Biting his tail, biting his ears. He doesn't do anything. The lioness, she starts messing with him, coming over, making trouble. Still, nothing. Now, the other animals, they notice this. And they start to move in. The jackals. Hyenas. They're barking at him, laughing at him. They nip his toes and eat the food that's in his domain. They do this and they get closer and closer and bolder and bolder till one day that lion gets up and tears the sh out of everybody, runs like the wind, eats everything in his path. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals who he is. It's too late to be scared. It's time to kill. I'm going to the other room. You come out when you're ready. Don't beat him. Kick his ass. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I have three takeaways that we can all learn from. From watching this scene. First, the most obvious quality about this movie speech is that Christopher Walken is telling a story. Not all speakers tell stories and not all movie speeches use stories, but most of the great ones do, and you should tell stories too. So what makes this a story is that it has a classic three-part structure. I've talked about this many times, but it's worth repeating. First, the beginning sets the stage. Look at this lion. He's the king of the jungle. Second, the middle of the story is where all the animals keep bothering the lion, and you can feel the tension building to that climactic moment. And third, the end of the story shows the outcome. Until one day, that lion gets up and tears the sh out of everybody, runs like the wind, eats everything in his path. And you can use that same basic storytelling arc to turn even ordinary experiences in your life into tellable engaging stories. Stories are powerful ways to make a point because they have this life of their own. Stories inspire us, motivate us, and stick with us. In fact, I'm willing to bet that you may go back and watch this again just to immerse yourself and get swept away in it. Stories are like candy for our brains. Second, another key strength of the way he tells the story is the number of action verbs. Christopher Walken uses lots of action-oriented words. And the genius of this is that we can visualize it in our minds and it brings the story to life. Here are all the action-oriented verbs and phrases he uses. And when I see that many action-oriented phrases in a short speech like this, that tells me this is no accident. Whoever wrote this labored over every single word. The little lion comes, they start messing with him. Biting his tail, biting his ears. I can picture the lion cubs biting his tail and ears. The jackals. Hyenas. The barking at him, laughing at him. I can see the jackals barking and laughing at him. And I could 100% picture the lion tearing everything up at the end. I also noticed that he uses a limited number of adjectives. Yes, it was hot, for example. The lion had a huge mane. 
But when we compare it, he spends about 80% of his time on action. Those action words move the story forward and create a balance of suspense and momentum. The bottom line for us is to use more action words in our stories. Third, he tells the story to make a larger point. Now, this is a great story, even if we don't know the context. Lots of people can relate to it. But in this case, he walks into the bathroom because he has something he wants this pool player to hear, a lesson he wants him to learn. Stories are a great way to illustrate a lesson, but the lesson of a story may or may not be obvious in all situations. There's always a chance that we may listen to a story and say to ourselves afterward, great story, but why are you telling me this? So he does what most great storytellers do in two parts. First, he gives him the why. Why the lion tore everything up. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals who he is. That line explains the why, the bigger message here, and it's just an epic line. But then he connects the dots and after a short pause, tells the pool player what he's been getting at in this particular moment. It's too late to be scared. It's time to kill. I'm going to the other room. You come out when you're ready. Don't beat him. Kick his ass. The point for you and me is this. Don't just tell stories for their entertainment value. Tell stories to make a point. And be sure the moral of the story, the lesson you want your listeners to learn, is obvious by the end. Now, I could say a lot more about this movie speech, and you may have been expecting me to go in a different direction. So I have three additional features that I thought about, and I want to ask you about them. First, as mentioned, this is a very concise monologue. It's only about 150 words. So the question for you is this. If this was longer, do you think it would still be as powerful? And second, I want to hear your thoughts on the actual sound of his voice. A lot has been said over the years about Christopher Walken's unique cadence and his tone. So the question is, how big of an impact do you think his voice has on this particular story? And third is his eye contact and posture. Christopher Walken is 100% locked in with this other guy, and he's higher up. And I want to hear your thoughts on how that nonverbal aspect of Christopher Walken's performance adds to the impact of his words. Post your comments below, and of course, feel free to let me know what else I miss and what other movie speeches I should react to. I'm doing a series on moments like this, and I'd love to hear your suggestions. Till next time, thanks, God bless, and I will see you soon.